First, you are expressly prohibited from retaining any legal counsel. Should you retain any legal counsel, the receiver may move the court to find you in contempt of the receiver order. You want to challenge the court order? I'll have the marshals behind me. I'll come to your house, pick you up, I'll put you in jail. I can seize your property, do anything I need to do to enforce my orders. So any failure to comply with this order is contempt, punishable with lots of dollars, punishable with jail, dead. The Britney Spears guardianship made headlines after the singer's human rights were violated by an American court. Some say this is just the tip of the iceberg as regular Americans are being subjected to even harsher violations. Consider the case of Jeff Barron. Jeff Barron is an internet pioneer who invented technology competitive with Google during the early days of the internet. Coming from humble beginnings, Jeff taught himself computer programming and used his $500 savings to launch his business from a small apartment. I had this longtime dream and ambition to create something that would change the world for the better. And it really began when I was a kid and heard about Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. They became such a tremendous inspiration for me throughout my childhood and then into my adult life. My vision was to create a virtual universe with domain names as the communities and buildings where people could learn, socialize, and conduct business. So I set out to invent domain name technology, which would be the foundation of these cities of the next century. It would be an alternative way of finding information and services. Different in some respects from a search engine, but similar in many ways. And that's what I spent 15 years doing. After many years of blood, sweat, and tears, he achieved success and eventually earned worldwide acclaim for his technology inventions. Jeff Barron was seen as one of the internet pioneers. His company, Ondova, ran the domain creation. This is a guy, he had around 80 million unique visits per day to his sites, and he had one million domain names that he controlled. At that time, I realized that I had the opportunity to fulfill my lifetime passion, to find a cure for juvenile type 1 diabetes. Using the fruits of his newly attained success, Jeff founded a charitable medical trust to find a cure for type 1 diabetes, a disease that he suffered from since age 3. He donated virtually all of his earnings to that cause. After years of relentless hard work, the trust attained a value that brought the goal of finding a cure within reach. Several years ago, the charitable trust and Jeff were defending a frivolous lawsuit, which was settled in their favor. The value of the trust was disclosed in court after the settlement. Then the law took a back seat to greed and abuse. So if, if a judge is biased, and step one is if, it, if a judge has an obvious bias, for example, I have a cousin who's a well-known judge here in Dallas, the judge is supposed to take it upon themselves to recuse themselves from the case. So if they think they've got a conflict that they can't overcome and be fair to everybody in the case, the judge's duty is to not wait for somebody to say something. Instead of closing the case as required by law, the judge held a private meeting with Jeff's adversaries and devised a plan. At this off-the-record meeting, the judge stripped Jeff of his fundamental human rights and made Jeff a ward of the court. No notice was given to Jeff and no hearing was held. No charges were made against Jeff, nor was any evidence given. Regardless, the judge immediately fired Jeff's lawyer and made his close friend Jeff's master. As incredible as this sounds, the order gave possession and full control of Jeff to the master and forbid Jeff from doing anything without the master's permission. When he needs medical care, Jeff has to get approval to see a doctor or take medicine. Likewise, if he wants to vote or drive a car, his master determines if and on what conditions he can do so. If Jeff earns any money, it all goes to the master. And if Jeff wants to speak in court, he can only do so if the master gives him permission. The sole purpose of all of this was to loot the charitable trust and prevent Jeff from complaining about it. When Jeff tried to complain, the judge went berserk. 
I have the full force of the Navy, Army, Marines behind me. You're a fool, a fool. You're a fool to screw with a federal judge. And if you don't understand that, I'll make you understand it. The judge immediately seized the trust, all of Jeff's possessions, and everything Jeff owned. The court liquidated everything, including Jeff's home, bank accounts, cell phone, and documents, and distributed all to the judge's lawyers and foreign cyber pirates. The ruling that ended up seizing Jeff's assets uh, was backdated and took place without his presence. Ex parte communications resulted in a hearing that he never was given a notice to attend. As someone who's placed in the receivership, you're cut off from your assets and the ability to defend yourself. The entire charitable trust met the same demise, all done without any due process. When you see somebody's individual assets or corporate assets, you have to have a hearing, you have to give someone due process under the Fifth Amendment, and you have to give someone enough resources to fight the fight. No criminal charges were ever made against Jeff, and Jeff did not have creditors. So what did Jeff do to deserve this? He was accused of causing a delay in the lawsuit, which was already settled, and not paying his lawyers as much as they demanded. When that didn't stick, they doubled down and invented a story that Jeff was the mastermind behind an elaborate plan to wreak havoc on the legal system and take money away from the legal profession. All of these allegations were proven to be completely fabricated, a false narrative to justify looting the trust and persecuting Jeff. The evidence shows that Jeff paid all of his lawyers in full and the lawsuit was already settled. It boiled down to pure greed. We have a fundamental right to be secure in our persons, papers, and effects against all unreasonable search and seizure. None of these conditions were met in Jeff's case. Legal scholars refer to this case as the most outrageous denial of a person's basic constitutional and human rights in this country since the abolition of slavery. I'm Donna Barron, and I'm the mother of Jeff Barron. You may have heard of his tri uh, trials and tribulations, or maybe you haven't, I, I don't know, but he has been going through a horrendous, horrendous court battle. He has been fighting judicial corruption like no one has ever, ever heard of before. When I tell my friends what Jeff has been going through, they say, oh, no, 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 this is America. Those things don't happen. Judges have to be truthful and honest, and uh, justice is blind, right? And I said, well, you think it was blind, but it's not really blind. And what I'm feeling is that our court system is no different than any dictatorship country, the way they treat their people and the way they throw people in prison for no reason at all. Maybe they just don't believe in the color of the president's jacket. And that's kind of what happened to Jeff. He got involved in a civil lawsuit with an ex-business partner that went sour. And what's happened, Jeff has been fighting without a lawyer. He's been fighting to try to get his rights back. The court system has stripped him of his rights to do many, many things. They won't allow him to have a bank account. They won't allow him to travel. They won't allow him to do anything. They've told him, we own you, Baron, from the skin out. We own you. Anything you want, you come to us and you ask. So that, so many rights of his have been violated. The language of civil process was used to accomplish a virtual uh, uh, house arrest situation. Everything but the ankle bracelet. Really, uh, a slave. He's the first person to experience 21st century United States slavery since 1865. The judge abolished Jeff's constitutional right to a trial and his right to be represented by a lawyer. That's right. The judge literally ordered that Jeff had no right to defend himself and was forbidden from hiring his own lawyer. The master reinforced the judge's oppressive commandments to Jeff. How on God's green earth, in the U.S. court system, could a citizen be told, as Jeff was, you don't even have the right to an attorney. And worse, when you had attorneys, you're using them too much. 
Despite these edicts, a brave lawyer decided to enter the case and support Jeff. Initially, I took on this case for a couple reasons. Uh, first being because after evaluating the facts of the case, Jeff's case obviously had merit. But more importantly, the reason I took the case on is the same reason I like plaintiff's work is because what had happened to Jeff was wrong. Uh, it was shocking. And to think that things that Jeff went through could happen to ordinary people in everyday life just wasn't something I could stand by and watch. And I wanted to jump in and do everything I could to both help out Jeff, but also to try to make sure that if this type of thing happens again in the future, the same results don't, don't occur. And uh, essentially someone's livelihood isn't taken away from them for no good reason. But it really is an overcomplicated, it, it, it's difficult to answer a question like, why did you take on Jeff's case? Because there's a million reasons why. Here's what happened in Jeff's case that's outside the law. Jeff's attorney and someone who that attorney hired to allegedly work for Jeff illegally claimed that Jeff owed them money. That's outside the law. They then took it upon themselves to take control of all Jeff's assets. That's outside the law. They have held on to those assets and refused to give any of them back to Jeff. That's outside the law. And now, as, as of 2019, they started claiming all of Jeff's assets were his, were theirs, and they were their assets because they were needed to satisfy these false debts that Jeff allegedly owed his lawyer and this employee. Eventually, the orders against Jeff were deemed illegal by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and the property taken from the trust and Jeff was supposed to be returned. But the lawyers and judge refused to comply. This is the United States of America. This sounds more like the Soviet Union. Rod Serling should come out and introduce the episode that week. In order for this to not happen to anybody else in the future, uh, people need to know about it. People need to speak up about it. And honestly, Jeff has to fight this all the way through because if Jeff doesn't get the result that the law says should happen, it just sets bad precedent in the future, which kind of supports criminals doing what we believe these criminals have done, which is steal someone's assets and then use the court system to keep those assets from its rightful owner uh, and do so by simply lying. And so the only way, in my opinion, that this won't happen to someone in the future, and, and let me be clear, I do think this is gonna happen to many people in the future, but the only way to at some point hopefully stop this from happening to anybody else is to let as many people know about it as possible and hope that they are as outraged as we are because when you realize this is how our judicial system works sometimes, it's scary. I'm starting this campaign not only because I'm losing my son, but also because we're losing our country. In this country, my father gave his life for. He died fighting the Nazis, and I'm very upset about what is going on in our country today. I have two goals, to help get justice for Jeff and to make sure nobody else will ever have to experience this type of abuse. That abuse has been going over the, the last so many years, I, I just, it's just hard to believe. In an attempt to reach these goals, I humbly ask for any donation you're willing to make. I also extend an open invitation to anyone who can assist in other ways. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your generosity, your kindness, and your support. For additional information, you can visit freejeff.org and just get more information on this topic. Also, I have proof of everything contained in this video and more.